So this Colleen slash Miranda Singh drama has been going on for quite a while now. So when she released that apology video, a lot of people already had an understanding of the allegations against her and was awaiting to see what she was going to say about that. And they were judging what she said in that apology video based on the context of the allegations. Now, I'm coming at this from a very interesting standpoint. You see, I didn't really know what the allegations were. And even though over the last couple of weeks, all this stuff has been coming out and these different videos and articles, I've largely stayed away from that. So I'm judging the video on the context of what she's saying, as opposed to what it is she's allegedly done. I'm learning everything about the allegations based on that one apology video, which is a very interesting way to come about it. You see, I was never going to make a video on this because, hey, the apology video was posted, what, four or five days ago? So in terms of YouTube, I am way behind. This is in the past. You yourself has probably already seen about five or six, maybe even more videos of people talking about this one apology video. I've got nothing I can bring to that subject that you've not already heard before. What, I'm going to sit here and tell you it's a, it's a terrible apology? Or I'm going to sit here and tell you that? She never actually addressed the allegations. You've heard all of this. You've probably already figured this out on your own. So the opinion I formed is on a very different basis to how everybody else formed their own opinion. Second to that, within my route to form this opinion, I've came to a realization, an opinion, which I've not heard anyone speak about. So I thought it would be interesting to share with you. So that's exactly what we're doing. Throughout this Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings video essay, right now that you're already in, we're already onto chapter two of the video. So for a bit more context, I'm gonna strut to this video and there'll be chapters at the bottom of how I came to form this opinion and then the opinion. So don't just skip to the end to get my thoughts on it because I don't want you judging that opinion without first understanding the situation fully and if you already understand the situation understanding the situation from my point of view and how i came to understand said situation to get to that opinion if that makes sense so the chapters are at the bottom i'm going to skip through this if you've not heard any of the drama and you're like i was well i'm going to explain bits throughout the video so you should be fully able to understand it and if you already know about what happened and this is your 10th video on the subject don't worry because I'm going to keep those bits brief so we'll be able to move on a lot quicker. So context from my point of view. I knew who Miranda Sings was. I had no idea who Colin Ballinger was. I still don't really fully know. I thought the Miranda Sings was, I thought that, that character was who she actually was. I mean, she's an OG YouTuber, right? So I've obviously heard of her, but I never really enjoyed her videos, so I never watched her content. I'm not the kind of person that's going to shit over someone else's creativity and tell you it's terrible content because, hey, she's grown for a reason. A lot of people liked her videos, so it must be good to a certain audience. I just happen to not fall in that audience. It never appealed to me. That character was never something that I found likable. In fact, it's much the opposite. I found it very annoying. So the only context I had when I watched this apology video was A, she'd done something wrong. And B, it's supposedly the worst apology YouTube video in history, in YouTube history, which is what perked my interest. So I checked out the video. And my first thoughts were that she can actually sing. I never knew she could sing. I thought the, the whole character was built around being a bad singer, but she can sing. Well, well, that was news to me. My second thought is... You know, I hate to say it, but it's kind of a banger. You know that? It's, it's got a bit of a hook to it, and it? That chorus, the, the toxic gossip train, I'm, I'm really liking that. It probably gets stuck in your head. It's a bop. And I understand that it's 10 minutes long and she repeats a lot of the same thing, but I thought that she actually made some, some good points in there. What I was gathering from the video was that she may have said some inappropriate things to her fans, but people are kind of just blowing this out of proportion and that this whole thing started over a fart joke that she made five years ago which i just thought is just typical cancel culture it's ridiculous it's what a lot of people are doing is digging up 
old stuff that especially like YouTubers have been doing that was done in a different time, in a different context, in a different culture, and then bringing it into this new world, which has changed so much, and what is appropriate now wasn't appropriate back then, and what isn't appropriate now was appropriate back then, and they're dragging that up, and then now oh, these people are getting cancelled for it, and they have to apologise. I can just see in my head how that played out, because like I said, she's an OG YouTuber, and YouTube was basically built on fart joke, let's be honest. Especially like comedic YouTube channels. They was built on fart jokes, which nowadays isn't something that we would consider that creative or maybe even appropriate. So in my head, she's done some fart jokes and now people are like dragging that up and saying, that was wrong, you shouldn't have done that, that's inappropriate. And now she's getting cancelled for it, which I found to be a bit ridiculous. So I thought she made some good points points in basically saying she's not going to apologise, and I thought, hey, you do you, you know, if this is true, why should you apologise? She's basically saying, I did nothing wrong, I'm not apologising. Fair enough, I give her big props for doing that and not just biting the bullet and apologising for something she don't believe in. I respect that, that's authenticity, I like it. I did notice that she said a lot of this isn't true, but she didn't provide any kind of details on it, which I always found a bit bit sketchy because if someone's saying something about you that's not true, that's about to cancel your career, you'd likely got proof that it's not true, which you didn't provide, but I suppose it would take away from the, um, the light-hearted aspect of doing the song, which I actually, despite what other people, what everyone else thought, what I thought was a very creative way to go about it. So post-video is when I went to look at what she's actually done and what she is being accused of, get both sides of the story, sort of speak. What exactly is Colleen Ballinger accused of? What did Colleen Ballinger need to apologise for in the first place? And it turns out that she was underplaying a lot of these things and like I said, I'm not going to touch on that stuff too much because you've probably already seen the deep dives about that and it's not really this video, what this video is about, but for a little bit of context, she's been inappropriate to minors. She's a 36 year old woman with underage fans who she is inappropriately speaking to. That being said, it is difficult to find reliable context because a lot of people are saying things but it is a lot of he said she said and out of context things can seem a lot worse than they actually are or that they were at the time. At the time, it could have been perfectly fine, but now people are saying it in a different in a different way. It can be really taken out of context, so it is difficult to find out to find the truth and in what people are saying. Luckily, in this situation, we do have some hard truths. We have photo evidence. We have authenticated screenshots, so there is truth in it. So we're only going to concentrate on a few of the absolute truths, not the he said she said stuff just the truths. Firstly is this fart joke, which it was all about. Turns out that this was a 16 year old girl named Becky. She went to one of her shows where she got pulled up on stage and she had kind of her legs spread and then a big fart joke inserted all the top of it. What Colleen is alluding to in her apology video is that the thing that was wrong was making the fart joke, as if it would make that, which I can see why that person probably Felt bad to, you know, get pulled up on stage and then this big fart joke makes an embarrassment out of her in front of possibly thousands of people, but not the end of the world. It turns out it's a little bit more than that. It turns out that, that it's more about the indecency that she chose a young girl who was wearing a dress and that she's spreading her legs and basically putting her body on show and making her feel basically naked up there. It's not even about the, the fart joke per se. It's about the way she was acting, spreading this young girl's legs on stage in front of thousands of people. And the indecencies, especially on stage, go on. We've got this photo of a, of a boy putting his hand down her pants. Then we get on to the group chat, the Colleenies Wieners. And this is the context on her basically saying she was, she was oversharing with her fans or she was talking to her fans in a way that she shouldn't be saying, which in her apology video, 
she's likening it to the weird aunt at a family gathering who's just like, hey, what's the what's the tea? But the reality is a little bit different. Once again, she vastly underplayed this. The group chat was basically something she set up with some of her fans, her underage fans. This was when she was in her early 30s to mid, late 30s. I think she's about 31 to 34 at this point. And she's telling these kids things about an abusive relationship that she's in, which is traumatic for any kid. You know, separate. Separate your own adult trauma with what you're going go around telling kids. Especially if you're an influential person or you're idolised by these kids. Yet, she's saying she's oversharing. I'm saying she's traumatising the kids. But the other aspect that is even more worrying about this is that she's saying these kind of things. These are screenshots of what she's saying in this chat. Keeping in mind she's in her 30s and she's saying these and she's saying these things to kids. One of those kids is someone who really kickstarted this, a kid named Adam McIntyre, who was a massive fan of hers when he was about 10 years old, went to some of her shows, and then started helping her run her social media for a little bit. Once again, there's a lot of he said, she said within this, so we're going to just cut that out. We're not going to focus on it too much, but one of the main incidents that kickstarted it was that she sent this kid her underwear. If you look back on a video, she's actually done an apology video in the past, much different than the apology video that we've seen with the ukulele. This was an actual apology video. In that video, we learn about some more stuff that came out prior to this, as well as what she says to justify it. So it turns out she was abusing her pet. She had a dog that had to be put down after it bit her, even though she was antagonizing the dog. She justifies that by saying she was just, that she said that just to kind of build it up and just to make, you know, a more interesting story. There's also some old insensitive and racial stereotype or stereotypical jokes that she was doing. And she justifies that by basically just right out apologizing and saying there were different times she didn't know what she was doing, which is a very respectable way to go about it. That gets me on to what I was saying before, and the internet is... It's a weird place, especially in cult cancel culture, and it's something that we've got, to, we've got to look at a little bit more. It's like this whole Kevin Hart thing that happened a while back. If you don't remember this, Kevin Hart was set to host the Oscars, and then someone pulled some old tweets where he was calling his son gay, and he was using gay as kind of like a slur to his son. These tweets were like 10 years old. And the Oscars basically said, you've got to apologise for what you've done or you're not going to be able to host the Oscars. And he came out and said, well, I'm not apologising. That was 10 years ago. That was a different time. 10 years ago, everyone said that stuff. It might have been insensitive to a certain part of the population, but that didn't stop the fact that everyone was using it and everyone was saying, everyone was saying those kind of things. So you can't just pick something out of one cultural time into today, where, you know, you fast forward to today, totally different. We don't allow that anymore. We realise that that's insensitive. We realise that it's, that it's offensive and we don't do it anymore. But you can't make him apologise for what is culturally correct today for something he did in a different cultural time. If that makes sense, I just think it's something we've got to keep an eye on. These racial stereotypes that Miranda Sings was doing back in the day when she first had to apologise was insensitive, but it was also a different time and there was a lot of YouTubers doing that. And it was kind of okay back then. So I don't think we should be dragging that out. But what we can focus on here is the clarity on the Adam McIntyre situation. She says that she realises that that was a stupid thing and she didn't do it in a creepy way. She did it on a live where she was unboxing underwear and she was just sending out everything she got on the live. Which yes, sounds a little bit better, but what I'm taking from this, with the Adam McIntyre situation, and the stuff she's saying in the group chats, and the stuff that she's doing on stage, is that she uses the Miranda Sings character to do inappropriate and creepy stuff that she would never be able to do. That she would never be allowed to do. And she says, oh, it's just a joke, you know, it's my character. I'm not creeper, 
the character's creeper. Like, oh yeah, I, I spread this young girl's legs wide on stage, but I didn't do it. My character did it. It's the kind of thing my character would do. Not me. My character's the creep. But that character is you. You decided to do it. You wanted to do that. And you did do that. That is you. You've got a, you've got to kind of own up to that. So my second watch of that apology video, now understanding the context on the other side. And like I said, you've really got to find the balance in this context. Because on one side, you've got her downplaying everything and saying it's not that bad, it's not that deep, calm down. And on the other side, you've got people saying, this is the worst thing in the world, this is horrible, this is terrible. And you've got to understand that it's not all good and it's not all bad. Everything she's doing is somewhere on that line and you've kind of got to figure out, sift through all that, understand both sides of the subject and form an opinion on where you think it is. The opinion I formed, once again, I went back into the video and I watched that apology video for a second time. This time I saw it in a very different way. I saw her downplaying a lot of the things. I saw her not taking accountability and I saw her not providing any proof to her side of the story. Whereas on the other side, people who are throwing accusations at her have proof. They have photo proof. They're saying, you did this. Here's the proof. She's saying, it's not that bad, but I've got no proof on my side of it, she's saying stuff, she seems to be justifying what she's doing by putting the blame on other people, by saying things like, hey, the character is PG-13 and it's up to the parents to decide what the kids watch, not me. She's saying, yes, I was saying inappropriate stuff to the, to the kids, but I was under the understanding that the parents was okay with it, which does not justify it in any means. You know, it, it, I understand what she's saying, in that if you are a parent, it is up to you to navigate what your kid, what kind of content your kid consumes and what your kid is watching. But at the same time, as the person putting it out there, you've got to understand that kids are going to see this and what are they going to think about it? Or how easy is it for a child to see this content? If it's on YouTube, very easy. So yes, not all of the blame is on you for what a kid sees but you do have to take some of that blame. And she's very much underplaying it. So my opinion on it is that she has said some really creepy things. She's done some really creepy things and she should be held accountable for it. She needs to address what's gone on and take a step back, which is basically the opinion that everyone else has formed, right? But then I thought, why isn't she doing this? She clearly knows what she's done that's wrong, why is she doing this kind of music? Why is she doing a song about it instead? And I got thinking about that and I was kind of racking my brain because at this point I wasn't going to make a video because my opinion just fell in the majority of the opinion. So I had nothing interesting to add. But that's when I thought, is she doing this as a cop-out? Is this her redundancy pay? And that is when I formed this, like I said, an opinion, which basically goes a little something like this. When a creator gets cancelled, especially a YouTuber, they usually try to navigate that and try to fight it with some kind of apology video. And if you ever look at other people's apology videos, you will notice that they're, that they're some of the most highly viewed pieces of content on their channel. We're not long coming off this whole Blair Illuminati drama, right? Which I've done a few videos on myself and one thing I mentioned in those videos was that her apology video is one of the most viewed on her channel and this is not out of the ordinary it usually is the case it usually goes like this let's say you're a youtuber and you have no way to justify the actions that you've done and that your character or that your content is built solely on a very specific point of view and you can no longer do that point of view, what do you do next? You do nothing, you're cancelled. So to put this in perspective with Miranda Sings, her character is this creepy kind of girl who, you know, the way she's monetizing it a lot from YouTube and doing her shows, is there are a lot of children, there's a big audience built on children. So she understands that children is her main audience. 
And it's these, and it's this audience, it's this fan base that really helped propel her career. She can no longer make content for that audience because of everything that's coming out now. So what does she do? She can't do anything. She can't just suddenly change and go, you know what, Miranda Sings is now going to be fully for adults. We're going to switch on an 18 plus and we're going to keep it a child free zone. So her career is over either way. And it's like these allegations that are coming against her, she has no way to justify them. Why does she have no way to justify them? Because she's already done a previous apology video where she's admitted that she has done it. So it doesn't even matter that everyone's got photo proof of this. She's already publicly admitted to doing these things. So what is the point in making an apology video in the first place? She might as well just quit, right? She's basically been made redundant from YouTube. She could still make content, but no one needs anymore. She's redundant. Now, in real life, in adult world, when you get made redundant, you get a good little payout, right? You don't get that from YouTube, right? So you've got to make your own redundancy pay. Looking at that video that she done, there's some interesting points to make out. First of all, the song. Why is it a song? Well, one thing you can know is that when it is a song, you can't put clips of that in your videos without infringing on copyright. Because songs are more copyrighted than videos, you can't use that in fair use and use the sound without infringing on copyright. So everyone who's doing these videos where they're talking about it, if they're clipping in parts of her apology video, they're not going to be monetized, or even worse, she's going to get monetized from that. You've also got to look at the way that YouTube pays for views. The CPM, it changes depending on what industry you're in. And if you're a, if you're a music creator, and you do a music video, you're going to have an advert typically at the beginning and at the end, which she does and which I was served with when I watched it. One at the end, one at the beginning, sorry, and one at the end. For music, you're looking at about $5 per thousand views, right? Let's assume she's on the super low end because of the context, because it is an apology video and because a lot of people are hating on it. Let's assume it's about £2.50, right? As it stands, that video has been on YouTube for five days and has 8 million views. One of the most viewed videos on that channel. Like I said, this is not a surprise. This is the way it normally goes with apology videos. Served with an ad at the end. Let's assuming that the CPM is £2.50 per thousand views. That's about 20k. About £20,000. And I could be way off. She could be getting a lot higher. CPM should be getting a lot lower, but let's, we're working with averages here and we're just assuming. We can assume that over the last five days, she's made 20 grand from that video. Not to mention, because she hasn't added much context on what she's saying, it forces a lot of other people to make videos in response to that, like I'm doing now, which draws even more views to that video, but more so, it gets people who don't quite know who she is to watch more of her older content to get a gist of who she is. Like me, like I said at the very beginning. And we're bringing this whole thing around. I didn't really know who she was, right? So after I watched that apology video, to get more context, I watched more of the Miranda Sings videos to see what the character was like. And I watched more of her Colleen Vlogs videos to see what she's like in the vlog videos. So I've not just contributed one view to the apology video like the other 8 million people have in the last five days. I've contributed about 10 views spread across both her channels. And there's a lot of people who are doing that exact same thing. So she might have made roughly £20,000 or dollars from that apology video in the last five days. But you've also got to take into account all the other videos which have even a higher CPM because they're not so controversial and because they're longer and because they've got mid-roll ads throughout them, how much she's making off them. Within the last week, she's uploaded one video on both her channels, which is this one. And yet, she could fully, full well have made over, way over 200k just from new views alone. Is she doing that purposely, doing the song, doing something that would go down in history as the worst apology ever, just to generate as much money as possible 
as she knows that her career is over anyway, you might as well. I feel like she's doing this purposely to get people to talk about it, purposely, so she can quit. I don't think she has any intention in trying to make a comeback to YouTube. I don't think we're going to see any more Miranda Sings videos. I don't think we're going to see any more of these vlog videos. Maybe she'll do more of these kind of apology videos to generate even more money as all this attention's on her. But in the long run, I don't see her having a career under any of these characters or new characters. And I don't think she does either. I think she's just doing this to get as much money as she can before she leaves. And she's going to get a lot more money by doing something ridiculous like this than she is by just coming clean and once again admitting what she's done. Like she did in her old apology video where she just said, yeah, I'm wrong, what of it? Clearly that didn't work for her. Because no one forgive her, people are still pulling up that kind of stuff now. A lot of the reason she's being cancelled now is for the stuff she's already apologised for. So she knows that doesn't work. She knows that's not going to happen. So she might as well do this, right? Genius. And that's what I think is going on behind the scenes here. I'll be very interested to know what you think about it. And hey, if you wouldn't mind, if you're still watching the video at this point, please do comment, leave a like, or even subscribe. Because in the future, when I upload other videos that I can monetize, that's going to be a big help for me. This video in particular, I'm not going to be able to monetize. Because of the sensitive subject matter, YouTube is going to limit that monetization. Which is a great point to make out for her video. She doesn't touch on the subject, so she can still put those ads before and afterwards without getting limited advertisement, without getting limited revenue on it because she's not actually mentioning the controversial subjects, the controversial issues that breaks YouTube's advertising code. So she can still monetize off it. Unlike me, who's mentioning what she's done, and as so, YouTube is gonna stick a big limited ads or no ads on this video. So I'm not getting paid for this. But one of my future videos, I may be able to get paid for, could it be less controversial? In which case, I would need you. So. If you can spare a minute to do that, do so, and if you can't, not an issue. It's your life, do whatever you want. Until the next video, goodbye.